Over the course of four years, six men would lose their lives to a depraved killer in Kansas City, Missouri. He not only murdered his victims, but put them through excruciating torture. Some lasted days, while others lasted weeks, as the target of his twisted fantasies. The monster documented the ordeals he put his captives through in detailed notes. When he was done with them, he carefully packaged their bodies and left them out with the garbage to be picked up and taken away. Robert Burdella, the Butcher of Kansas City. Robert Berdella was born in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio on the 31st of January, 1949. His parents were Catholic and took him and his brother to church most Sundays and also had them attend Catholic school. Berdella was known as a smart child, but he had a speech impediment and weak eyes which required him to wear thick glasses. He had very few friends and spent most of his time at home. His personality and health issues restricted him from participating in most sports while his brother excelled at them. Berdella's father put a lot of emphasis on sports and athleticism and looked down on his oldest son. As they grew up, Robert would often be compared to his younger brother by his father, and in addition to the verbal abuse that they got from their dad, he also beat them. In school, Robert Berdella was bullied by his classmates, and while he performed well in his studies, teachers were often frustrated with him due to his negative attitude and self-isolation. As he grew older, Berdella discovered that he was gay, though he hid it desperately and even briefly had a girlfriend. He became more arrogant as he grew up, and those who knew him say he was rude and condescending to others, particularly women. On Christmas Day, 1965, his father had a heart attack which spurred a deep interest in religion. Though Berdella studied a variety of religious teachings, he soon became cynical and dismissive of faith. That year, there was something else that had a major impact on the young man's development. He saw the movie, The Collector. The film follows a man who kidnaps women and imprisons them in his basement. Berdella said that it had a massive effect on his mindset when it came to other people. When his mother remarried, Robert further isolated himself. He spent his time painting, collecting stamps, and writing to pen pals around the world. They would send him photos and stamps for his collection and Berdella began collecting all forms of odd antiques and primitive artifacts, and later would open a store to sell such items. Upon graduating from Cuyahoga Falls High School, Robert Berdella moved to Kansas City to attend the Art Institute there. He had hoped to become a college professor and was successful during his first year. After that, he dabbled in drug dealing and was outspoken in his anti-authoritarian beliefs. While selling drugs, Berdella also began abusing alcohol and animals, once he decapitated a duck in front of his classmates, and there were also experiments with dogs and sedatives, foreshadowing his future acts for which he would become infamous. Things started to go downhill for the art student when he was arrested twice for drugs and dropped out of school after they punished him for the killing of the duck, which he claimed was an act of artistic expression. Robert moved into a house off campus and began living as an openly gay man. He was known to use the services of prostitutes and spent his time around addicts and alcoholics. He began using money to hold power over them and exert his influence. During this time, he worked as a chef in various restaurants and sold antiques and curiosities on the side. As his sales increased, he shifted his focus and formed several overseas business connections, which he used to obtain interesting items that he could sell. In 1982, he quit working as a chef and rented a booth in a market which he called Bob's Bazaar. Despite consistent income from his business, he found it difficult to pay for his daily expenses and lifestyle. Berdella stole and scavenged items he could sell to supplement his income and became friendly with another vendor, Paul Howell. He also established a friendship with Paul's son, Jerry, who would be his first victim. On July 5, 1984, Berdella offered to give Jerry Howell a ride to a dance contest out of town. Instead, he drugged the 19-year-old, took him home, and tied him to his bed. For more than a day, he abused and violated the young man. 
he kept a detailed log of the horrors he inflicted on Jerry as he would do with his subsequent victims. After 28 hours, Jerry either suffocated on his own vomit or overdosed on the drugs that Berdella had given him. Berdella hung the body upside down and slashed Howell's neck to drain him of blood before cutting it into pieces. He wrapped the parts in garbage bags and left it out for the garbage men to take to the dump. When Jerry never came home, the creature told everyone that he had dropped him off as planned in the other city. The second victim arrived at Berdella's home seeking a room to rent. 20-year-old Robert Sheldon moved in on April 10, 1985. He began to get on the killer's nerves almost immediately, and on April 12th, he came home to find Sheldon drunk. Berdella would later say that he saw the 20-year-old as an opportunity to express some of the anger and frustration that he had towards other people. The monster drugged Sheldon and locked him in a bathroom on the second floor of the house. For three days, he endured horrific tortures at the hands of his captor. Berdella attempted to deprive him of his senses by filling his ears with construction caulking, and burning his eyes with drain cleaner. To inflict pain on Sheldon, Robert stuck needles under his fingernails and tied his hands with a thin wire. The wire cut into the skin, damaging nerves and tendons. After three days, before workers were scheduled to arrive to repair his roof, Berdella suffocated Sheldon by putting a plastic bag over his head before cutting up the body to dispose of it. The pace of the murders would accelerate after the murder of Robert Sheldon and become even more depraved and vicious. The next killings happened rapidly, and 1985 would be a bloody year at the Berdella house. 27-year-old Mark Wallace took refuge in a tool shed in Robert's yard on June 22, 1985. He had once done yard work for the killer and was invited inside when he was discovered. Once Mark was inside the house, Berdella offered to administer an injection to calm him down. Soon after the shot, Wallace lost consciousness and the creature carried him into his bedroom. For the next day, Berdella tested various torture methods on him, including electric shocks and sticking needles into his back. At 7 p.m. on June 23rd, Mark Wallace died from a combination of drugs and lack of oxygen. Stay tuned, part two coming soon.